self is no self. Yes. Yeah, and it transcends both the words. You know, the self. Buddha was very clear about using no self. But of course, there was a misinterpretation of that too. They thought it was some kind of existential nihilism. Like there was no existence whatsoever, which is not at all what he's saying. He's just saying that that there isn't a self. There's not nothing you can define and say it's a self. This, you know, it's emptiness. Right? And in in the Hindu and other traditions, they would talk of it as the self, right? which again is the, is really the same thing. It's that which actually is, but has no boundaries. You can't really call it a self can't say it's not a self because even self and no self are opposites right they require each other in order to be spoken of you can't speak of no self without a self <laughs> or self without the absence of self and so now you see oh it's even deeper and more subtle than that it is beyond all opposites you can't even call it an it it's just you it's what's perceiving it at, at all times <clears throat> So the, the idea of no self is just to really recognize that everything you experience is a very complex combination of elements. Right? You know, and any individual human life is made up of, there's the physical components, which is a hundred trillion cells dancing together, constantly turning themselves over, the thoughts, the emotions and the like. But they all came, you know, they, they didn't operate in a vacuum. This body is the result of bodies from before that, going back God knows how long. How long. The, the environment I was in, the education I got, the, you know, the, the, the culture that it appeared in, all of these things, right? So I say, well, what's me, right? <laughs> what's me in all of this? And this is what he was pointing at. There's, there's no self. Look at any object, right? Take a, take a bicycle, right? Relatively, a relatively simple mechanism. But there, but the what's where's the bicycle? The bicycle, you know, it's well, it's gears and a derailleur and spokes and, and wheels and handlebars and bra brakes, right? But take so there's this combination of things. But take those apart, and where's the bicycle? It has no inherent existence. It's a temporary combination of a bunch of elements. And look at each one of those elements. What are the handlebars? Well, there's the aluminum that it's made out of. There's the shaping, and then there's the design. And where did the aluminum come from? Well, and that comes from, that comes from, it's made because it's got these metals and it goes through this process. Oh, and there are these people there, and, and they know how to make this process, and somebody invented that process. All of a sudden, you see that there's this incredibly complex, a stupendously uh, uh, enormous single functioning going on and all of this together makes this moment of human life so you can see that the moment itself is empty of inherent existence it has no self and yet it is it is this wholeness but even the wholeness it's not a panpsychism it's not there's this consciousness made out of the totality of of, of things it is it it, it is both that which is perceiving it and not that which is perceiving it at the same time. So the, 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 the perceiving itself is not made up of any parts. So you could call that the self. But the moment you do that, you might think of it as an entity, as somebody, as a god, right? As something that has a particular character. It's not. It's pure emptiness. So you can also say it's no self. Well, what is it? It's you. That's, that, that's it. That's all I can say. It, it's you.